So, got a spider co here. Spider co. I do like some spider co's, man. Yeah. So this is a Tasman Salt 2. I got this for my trips to salt water. Yeah. It's in H1 steel. And it's supposed to be corrosion proof. Not sure about this. What, what was it? Hawkbill blade? Hmm. Interesting. I mean, it feels a lot like a Delica. It really does. Pretty sure that is a Delica. Nice action. I'm guessing that all this is hard stainless. This hardware in here. Um, is it the really good kind of stainless? Yeah, I mean, that's not magnetic, not magnetic. None of the hardware is magnetic. The only thing magnetic is the blade, and that's H1 steel. And it's supposed to be, I don't know, corrosion proof? All right, well, let's check this thing out. Come on, get rid of the box. I don't know why I let that box hover. I normally would not let that box hover in there like that. I mean, excellent grip, wonderful ergonomics. The action's kind of sticky. Definitely a two-hander, not a one-hander. A lot of these spider codes, I mean, you can get them one hand, they'll drop to that finger and then you can close it. And it could be because on this salt version, it doesn't doesn't even have washers in it. That's possible. Let's find out. Come on. We'll get in there. And then we'll finish checking this thing in. But yeah, I am... I haven't covered a bunch of them on the channel. But I am a Spider Co. fan. And I own them. I think they can get a little overpriced. You know what I mean? And if I'm going to pick one up, I'm looking for, you know, the deal of the century type thing. Because that paying retail for them, nah. Nah, I'm out. Kind of like Benchmade. Benchmade's kind of in the same category for me. If I got to pay retail for it, mm, I don't think I'm going to own it. Come on, man. Let's, uh, let's punt. Let's go back here and get a couple of these out and see if I can't make this thing come apart. Goof. All those needed to come out. Boing. There it goes keep those those are to the opposite side um yeah i don't see any washers in here just plastic which is fine i mean this isn't a heavy work knife this is this knife is all about a hundred percent it's about being able to take it in salt water or you know any water really um i'm gonna wipe it down and see if we can't Clean it up a little bit. Put some good, good oil. You know, the kind of stuff that I use. And then we'll cover, I mean, obviously we're covering the disassembly and assembly of it. So if you purchase a Delica or, I don't know, a Dragonfly. I mean, there's so many. The Andela, the Endura. If you purchase one, they're all kind of the same. So I don't know if I've covered the action on this channel. I actually have another knife, Spyderco, that I picked up fairly recently that I'll be covering on the channel as well. It is a Delica. Um, I picked it up at a great deal. I mean, I watch for them. 
and I got a really good deal on it. And so I'll run it through the channel. Mm, let's put the tiniest little bit of lube down here. I mean, it feels pretty free on that plastic or what, you know, what is that, ABS or IBS or whatever. Um, and, of course, that spring shot off, that's what shot off. Let me find it. All right, gee, there it is. So it sits down in here. And, man, there's, you know, there's a couple of ways to skin this cat. Sorry for all the cat fans. Mm, I think I'm actually going to come. Nah, I'm going to do this side. And uh, there's a couple of ways to skin this cat. The way I like to do it is I'll leave that pivot out. And then I'll fight this lock down in there after the fact. That always seems to work the best for me. And so that's what I'm going to do here now is the other way work yeah um could i loosen the tension on this a tiny bit and maybe the action would run a little better i think i might anyways just because i'm gonna need some pliers i'm just gonna flatten that angle just slightly on that spring and that may may help this thing run a little better Let's go with that. I mean, I don't want to go crazy with it. I don't think I did anything. Hold on. Hold on. What the? That dude's funny. I don't know if you ever, if you know what I'm talking about. No way. Yeah, that dude, I mean, his success is blowed up. It's pretty, pretty neat to watch sometimes. People's success and how they just go from messing around on YouTube to just smashing it, you know. Good for them. Hope they manage the stress and the success well, you know, because money will change you, brother. All right. This all looks pretty good. I'm not going to change any of that. All right, here we go. So I just want to get down... I want that to rest in here. And as long as I come down properly, it should go right where I want it to go. Yeah, I felt it. Yep. All right, so I'm going to put the pivot in. Kind of hold everything in place. Then I'll get them three screws on the opposite side. And Spyderco does a good job, man. Everything's captured. Like, they capture all their stuff. So these three screws on this side, they're all captured. Yeah, all this is high-grade stainless. And so, on a Spyderco, not a lot of tension on these screws. They don't get torqued. You know, you're just making contact. Now, can you go in here and you know, put a, a little dippity dabbity do of uh, Loctite. Mm hmm. Sure. Am I gonna? Mm hmm. No, nope. I'm just gonna let them make contact. Just a slight tension on them. Now, the pocket clip screws, I'll put some tension on them. All right, so this blade right now, and I'm over tight here. There we go. This blade doesn't have any stop um, because the lock is missing. So the way that this lock is going to work, I'm going to rest it down in the knife. And I've got to line up this hole right here. And when I press here, it's going to put tension down on that spring. And then once that lines up, I'll be able to push this pin in there. And does it take some finagling? Sometimes. 
Like right there, it popped right out of my hand. So I'm gonna push that down like that. Sometimes it takes a little, a little finagling. Sometimes it takes a lot of flagellant. I definitely want to do it with the blade closed. I don't want that flying around when I'm putting that kind of tension on everything. That looks about right. And so this is captured, so I can get it in halfway, and it's the alignment is correct on it as far as the captured part. I think I'm too far forward. Mm -mm -mm. It's trying to get me. All right, well, sometimes if I do it with the knife open, the front of the lock kind of goes in place. Oof. Gonna make it as difficult as it can on me. Yeah, I'm too far forward. There we go. Hmm. perfect right there if I could just maintain there I got it Oof, patience. Wasn't that like a uh, Guns N' Roses song? With a little patience. I think so. I was never a huge Guns N' Roses fan. I mean, golly, I had a lot of friends that loved them. I mean, like, they were a big deal. Especially with the young girls. But, I don't know. Just never really did it for me. I mean, the action is definitely better. There, I can one-hand it now. I kind of throw it down on my finger. Now, obviously, when you do that, you want to keep your finger forward. And then you can reach up and get a hold of it. Yeah. I like it. What about play? Nah, it's locked up tight as a drum. Yeah, I mean, I might be able to manipulate it slightly. Yeah, come on. And of course, all spider codes, man, the more you use it, the better it's going to get. And can I manipulate this a little bit? Right here, I can put a little tension. <clears throat> pardon me. I can put a little tension on that spring, press down on it, and then rotate the knife. And it will help polish those metals together, the blade and the spring. Like so. And that helps. I 
Oh, almost. There it is. All right. Well, let's get the pop clip back on. Come on, man. Wrap up. I played that song on a video not too long ago. Wrap it up. It's old school. Those guys. Yeah. Put a little more tension on these pocket clip screws because they're actually into little metal zerks and uh, it'll activate that Loctite and that'll lock that down. You don't have to worry about my pocket clip coming off. All right. Well, we've been through it. Pretty, pretty nice. Let's talk about the action on a Spyderco like this. I mean, it's such a utilitarian knife. If I can get it to drop on my finger like that and then ultimately make this a one-hand knife, then I'm satisfied. I'm going to say that it's, you know, it's definitely B-level action. I mean, could it could it be better? I mean, could Spyderco do a better job? Do I have Spydercos that run better? 100% I do. Um, but am I in any way looking at this and thinking, yeah, that's not good? No, not at all. I'm, I'm very happy with the action on this. There's no washers on it. I mean, the idea is I should be able to take this into the ocean, uh, rinse it off in some seawater, you know, and then ultimately rinse it off with some water, regular water, and this knife continue to function, Right. And then when I got home, I could disassemble it, clean it really well, probably throw it in the ultrasonic, uh, re-lube re it, and it's good to go till the next trip when I'm out on the ocean, right? I think so. Um, ergonomics. Man, I, I think it's a Delica. I really do. Very nice ergonomics. Just locked in. I mean, reverse grip like a karambit on this knife. Mm-mm-mm. Yeah stupid i mean just perfect size for the hand really strong grip yeah very strong grip with this knife i wonder about that pocket clip i think it's going to run wonderfully on everything yeah yeah perfect good to go doesn't have a lot of tension um and i may actually resolve that a little bit just because you know this thing's definitely going to be in a pair of shorts possibly even a pair of swimming trunks um and so i'm going to want a little better tension on that clip so okay take two on that pocket clip so i just took it off i bent that down a little bit reassembled it and now the way more tension uh, it's still going to work really well on the thick stuff, but now it's a dryer clip. I mean, you could put that there, toss it into a dryer, that thing tumble around for 30 minutes, and it would still be right there. It could jump around. It's definitely going to hold in a pair of swimming trunks or shorts on a fishing boat, whatever. Yeah, 100% that's going to work, man. Um, safety, I mean, there's no issues with safety here. The tip's way down there. Complete backspacer with these back locks. Um, the clip is wonderful now. The tip's great. And no incidental in-pocket in blade contact. I wonder how sharp this thing came. Typical Spyderco fashion. A razor, yeah. Spyderco knives come very sharp. And this one's no exception. So, price and availability, man. Where can we get one of these and what do we got to pay for it? Okay, currently you can pick these up at White Mountain Knives. Um, this exact knife. They're $110 and some change. Or a hundred, yeah, I think a hundred and ten and some change. Well, with the discount code DM10 that you can find down below, but it's DM10. 
uh, you can get 10% off, which puts this knife like right at $99. And that's shipped and no tax. So, yeah, I mean, 100 bucks. Saltwater knife, there you go. Uh, any water knife. Well, I, I also have this little dragonfly. I want to show it. I think I featured it on the channel, but this is kind of my go to saltwater knife, man. I just, this little dragonfly, I, it's so understated, but yet legit. I mean, it's got same H1 steel. And, and listen, I've heard people talk about that H1 steel and say, well, you know, it doesn't keep an edge. And maybe it doesn't. I don't know. But I don't know. Mine mine always seems to strop up and be pretty wonderfully sharp. Um, so, I mean, people don't like D2 either. But the action on this one is really nice. The little, the little thumb roll. And then ergonomics. So, I like these little... Spyderco saltwater knives. You can get them. You don't got to get them yellow. They also have orange. And then the exact knife, I mean, same price. Uh, you can get it in black. So it's got the same. It may have H1 or H2 steel. There's an upgraded version now of this H steel. Um, but you can get it in a standard looking knife. Uh, you don't have to get the yellow. I like the yellow because if you do happen to drop it in the water, it stays visible. Like you can, you can track it at least for, you know, a millisecond and try to recover your knife. So, you know, that's what I like about it. It's, you know, this doesn't get left behind very often. The other thing is sitting on the boat or whatever, it, it'll pick, you know, it'll catch your eye. So anyways, the salt, this is the Spyderco Tasman Salt 2. Yeah, H1 steel, and uh, all heavy-duty stainless hardware, and I don't know, little little action tuning, and it is one-handed now. I can drop that to my finger and love that slow roll. So, hey, I appreciate you watching. Check one out.